Hi guys, welcome to Nick Barlow Radiology. I'm sorry it's been a while between videos. I've been away on holiday and then I've had loads of work to welcome me home. So unfortunately I haven't had a chance to make any, but I'll be yeah, uh, I'll be back on it now. And what better way to start up again than doing a video on colonic transit studies? And it's one of them things if you're reporting radiographer, if it was anything like my reporting training for abdomens, we had one lecture for everything. So it's one of them things kind of similar to OPTs. It tends to get brushed over and then you tend to have to learn it all yourself. And it's it's fine if you sat with a uh, dedicated GI radiologist, but if you don't have that luxury, it's quite difficult. So I thought this video might be helpful uh, just to give you a bit of detail and hopefully help you in your practice. So depending on what trust you're in, they all tackle colonic transit studies differently. So some will, um, the patient will get given a meal, which will have the markers in usually around 20, 25 markers, they'll ingest them, and then they'll do a series of x-rays to kind of monitor the transit of them through the colon. Some trusts will do it where they just do one x-ray after six days of ingestion, um, and other trusts will use different markers and they'll ingest the markers over different days. So they might do ingest 10 markers day one, 10 day two, 10 day three. It completely depends um, on the trust, on the protocol, have a look, before you report them, see what your trust does, just so you, you, you understand um, where they're coming from, what exactly the patient has gone through before you report them. So it takes a while normally for the markers to pass through the bowel, usually up to about five days, six days. Less than 5% remaining after five days is considered normal. So if the patient's at 20 markers, say, after five days, if there's less than five markers remaining, then that's considered normal. But what we want to be looking for is if there's more than that retained, and more importantly, where those markers are retained, where these markers are bunched together, because that's going to determine the problems that the patient has. And we can put that into the report rather than just describing the patient has markers here, here, and here. We can actually take that information and use it um, in the report to give a, to give a summary of the patient's potential disorder. So we look at this example here. This patient has had three different types of markers ingested all at different times. Cube, rod, and ring markers, all on different days. So here we've got a single cube marker projected over the cecum area. We've got two markers there projected over the descending colon. Uh, we've got a ring there in this uh, distal sigmoid uh, rectal junction area. But what we're seeing is we've got loads of different types of markers all, um, all bunched together within the rectum. Now, if there's a bunch of markers in the proximal end of the colon, that implies slow transit constipation. If it's in the distal part of the colon, which we're seeing here, it implies evacuatory or outlet disorder. OK, and we can summarize that in the uh, in the findings. So what we would do in the report, I would describe you can count them if you can. I mean, there's, so, there's loads here, but you can count the number of ring. Markers, uh, cube and rod, and you can say, look, yeah, we've got one or two here, but the vast majority are in the rectum bunched together. So that implies that this patient has an evacuatory disorder. That's how I report them. Um, that's what I was told. It may be that, you know, depending on where you are, they're happy for you just to, 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 to count them. But I think reporting, we really need to give more than that. We need to be able to give a summary. We can't just leave it to the clinicians to do that themselves. I think it's important that we take what information is available to us, summarise it and give a... Um, a workable diagnosis if at all possible so yeah guys hopefully that's been useful for you i am going to do some more videos as i've said uh, i'm also going to be doing some more uh, radiography career videos as well at some point so keep an eye out for them but uh, if you've liked this video give us a like please subscribe to the channel and share with your colleagues and uh, yeah all the best in your reporting practice and reporting studies hope it's been useful uh, let me know if you've got any ideas for future content but for now Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye for now.